Okay, today class we are going to be talking about inputs into Java and variables. So in Java, we have a couple different things that we want to touch on. So right now, um, we have a program. This is the main program that shows up when you run Replit. You have this statement here, system.out. So what that's basically doing is it's telling the system, which is this little window over here, to output something, okay? And then it does a dot print. So we're gonna print something, obviously. And then we do, it, this LN stands for line. So we're telling the system to print a line of text to our console. That's what the system.out.print line means, okay? And then we come into these brackets here. These brackets are right here and right here. And what those are mainly for is, I'm sorry, these parentheses. This, anything within these parentheses will get printed out. And you no, may notice that you also have these quotation marks. So these quotation marks signify a string that hasn't already been created. So we have a string in Java, and we're just using these quotation marks to say, hey, print this string. So that's why these quotation marks over here aren't showing up. It just says, hello world. So we're just printing out there. So in our PowerPoints that you guys should be going through, you should have noticed that we were using a scanner. And in our upcoming assignment, we are also going to be using a scanner. So what you really need to go through and do is, is you just need to import our scanner and how we import it. Think of importing as um, inputting the instructions to a scanner object. So the computer has no idea how to build a scanner or what that is. So we need to give it the instructions. So we do an import and then we do a u or a java .util scanner. Okay, and that, oh, Scanner. Okay, and what that is doing is it's telling Java the instructions for a scanner class. And then from there, we actually need to build a scanner object. So I've given my program the instructions, but I haven't built one, okay? So I am going to now build a scanner. So how we do that is we do scanner. So we're saying that this is a scanner object. I'm gonna name my scanner scan, and that is equal to a new scanner. And then we want the scanner to do take inputs. So we do a system.in. Okay, finish that line off with a semicolon there. So now we have our scanner. And let's ask it a question. Let's ask the user, what is their name? What is your name? Okay. So we're gonna ask the user what their name is. And then once that we get their name, we want to be able to take in their name. Well, how we take in their name is, is with a string and a line from the scanner. A string is a collection of characters. So we need to create a new string. How we create a new string is, is right under where we created our new object of scanner, we need to build a string. So how we do that is at capital S string, and then I'm gonna call my string username. Okay. Notice how for new words, I will traditionally do a capital to do the different words. So the first word starts with a lowercase, and then every new word of my variable name starts with a capital. That is called camel case. So new username. So we just created a space in the program to hold a string. We didn't actually assign it any value yet. We just created that space in the program. Now we're going to come over here and we're actually going to fill that space in the program. We're going to say username is equal to our scanner's input, okay, actually not that, we, we use scan dot, and then 
Just like in a real life scanner, if you were trying to make a copy of something, you have to actually perform the act of getting a copy. Well, even though we created the object in Java, we need to perform the act of getting the copy. So we do a scan.nextLine. So that's going to get us the next line that whatever the user types in. Okay, And then now our username is right here. So let's print out the username. So I'm going to say a system. I'm just going to do a copy and paste because that is quicker for the video sake. So it's just a system that out print line, and I'm going to say what the username or you entered, and then to print out the name after my quotation marks here, I'm going to do a plus, and then I'm going to put the name of the variable I created, which is username. So username. Okay. From there, let's give this a good old-fashioned run. And then let's take a look at it. And while this is, oh, it's up there. So I'm going to say my name is Tony. What is your name, Tony? All right. So we have Tony here. Okay. I just kind of wanted to explain something. So this right here is a string. Okay. This is a single string. And then this right here is a string. And then I use the plus symbol to print both of them at the same time. All right? Just that's what's going on there. Okay. So we've done that, and now we know we can store a string variable. Let's take a look at a int variable. Int, okay. And let's have that int variable be um, how much money do you have? Okay, but I want to just say the name is total money. Okay, and then let's ask the user how much money do they have. So let's say Tony, I'm going to say the user, whatever the user puts in their name plus the string of how much money do you have? Question mark. Okay. So once we put in that question mark there, we can then say, get in a number. So let's get in our number of... So how we get in our number is we created the space for our number to go by, inter by creating an integer. But we actually haven't given that number any value yet. So let's do a total money is equal to, well, we did a scan.next line to get in before. But instead of doing a scan.next line, um, we have a new function here called next int. And that's going to get us our next integer that the user types in. So let's put that in there. Okay. And then. We're going to just print out how much money they have, and that is going to wrap that up for today's video. You said you have plus, and then we're going to put total money. And let's give this a run here. Okay, what is your name? If I put in Tony, Tony, how much money do you have? I have $52. You said you have 52. Okay, so that is it for today's video. I'm going to post another one. And yeah, thank you.